Hello, today we are going to look at problems from chapter 21, which is the chapter on electric fields and electric force. And so there are six problems uh, for the recitation which you've been assigned. And then there are four problems on the second page for homework. So let's look at the recitation problems. So we have two charged dust particles exert a force of 3.2 times 10 to the negative two newtons on each other. What will the force, what will be the force if they are moved so that they are only one eighth as far apart? So remember Coulomb's law says that the force is proportional to one over r squared, where r is the distance between them. So if you divide r by one, one eighth, what does that do to the force? and then figure out uh, what the force will be at that point. So that's number six. For number 10, compare the electric force holding the electron in orbit. And so you're given the distance between, uh, from the electron to the nucleus around the proton nucleus of the hydrogen atom. So you're given R with the gravitational force between the same electron and proton. What is the ratio of these two forces? So the electron is going in orbit and um, there's, and it's attracted by the proton two ways. One is uh, to the fact that their charges are opposite and one is the gravitational attraction. And so you're asked to calculate both and you should see a pretty large difference between the two uh, forces. Then we move on to number 13. Three charged particles are placed on the corners of an equilateral triangle of side 1.20 meters. And so you're given the charges and you're asked to calculate the magnitude and direction of the net force on each due to the other two. So what I recommend doing is figuring out the individual forces and express them in unit vector notation. And remember the, um, Force that object one exerts on object two is gonna be equal and opposite to the force that object two exerts on object one. So if you know the force in one direction, uh, you just take the negatives of that and that's the force in the other direction. And then once you have those three individual forces, you can figure out the net force on any, of the one, any one object. And if you have any questions with this one in particular, please let me know. Um, uh, it's the superposition principle problem, so it's a little bit trickier than the others. But if you were assigned that and you're getting stuck with it, please let me know. Then uh, number 28, determine the magnitude and direction of the electric field at a point midway between a negative 8.0 microcoulomb and a positive 5.8 microcoulomb charge 8.0 centimeters apart. Assume no other charges are nearby. So you have two charges. And remember, the electric field goes out of positive and into negative. Uh, so it's one directional. The superposition principle still applies here, but it only applies in one direction. And so uh, the electric field at the midpoint is going to be the sum of the electric field due to each of the two charges. Number 32, the electric field between midway between two equal but opposite point charges is 586 newtons per coulomb. And the distance between the charges is 16.0 centimeters. What is the magnitude of the charge on each? So you have equal and opposite point charges at a point midway between. Do you think the magnitudes are gonna to add together or cancel each other out? And so you start with that and then figure out what the magnitudes are. And uh, so you have the magnitudes and um, uh, so you figure out what the individual contributions are. And from that, you can figure out what the charges are. And the last problem, calculate the electric field at one corner of a square, 1.22 meters on a side. If the others are occupied by 2.25 times 10 to the six, 10 to the negative six, excuse me, Coulomb charges. So you have three charges on different sides of a square. You want to find the electric field at the fourth corner of the square. And so again, the superposition principle is involved. 
You set it up in the XY plane, keep in mind, one charge is only gonna act in the X direction, one charge is only gonna act in the Y direction, and the other is going to act in both directions. So that's a little bit of a hint there. But again, the superposition principle applies. You're adding all three vectors together. But you can express this in unit vector notation, in which case adding the vectors together is actually fairly simple. So those are the six problems uh, you'll be doing. Try to get the video solutions posted by tomorrow, if you can, and then the homework due by Monday. If you're having trouble figuring out where and how to submit those, uh, let me know. I'm gonna try to set all that up today. So you know, don't uh, submit anything today just yet, but I'll be uh, emailing you with further instructions. Okay, so thank you very much and have a nice day.